Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining me. My name is T, and you're listening to Tokyo Yo Talk. And I'm very happy to be doing this again. It's been a long time since I've been at the microphone, and I'm very happy to be joined today by Tyler of Unparalleled Yo Yo. So, what's up? Hi. How are you doing? I'm great. Uh, thank you very much for doing this. Thank you for having. Me. Yeah, no, worries. no problem. I know we we've tried to set it up for a while, and yeah, I think it's been like what two months, three months in the making. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I think actually I haven't actually had any recorded since then. It's been a long, long break, so it's it's good to <laughs> to bring it back. So thanks a lot. But um Thank you. Yeah, so in case anyone isn't familiar with your company or what you guys are up to, do you wanna tell us a little bit about yourself and unparalleled? So my name is Tyler Shea. I'm twenty two years old to be in New York. And Unparalleled is basically a company where I try to create the most efficient and effective yo-yos as possible. Meaning there's no frills, nothing excessive, just pure class and design. And I make that for my players to give them the most efficient tools to come. And so how did you start the company? Like, was it something you'd been planning for a long time, or was it something yeah, that was... So uh, I used to be part of another company, and uh, I decided to do my own thing because, you know, with a business partner, there's always some something that you don't agree on, whatever, it just gets bad. So I just did my, I decided to do my own thing. A lot and of people liked it, so they wanted to join. So very fine group of people supporting. Did you start out with? a team kind of in mind or people who got on board right away or, or have you built the team up little by little? Um, actually, I haven't really added too many people since uh, the original team. Uh, the original team has been pretty successful and I had been talking to people for a long, long time doing something. So they were on board as soon as I started. You mentioned a little bit like, you know, you, starting out on your own doing something by yourself and like the challenge of working with somebody else that's tough too but what are the challenges of starting a company just on your own well I think that anyone can make a yo-yo now I think but understanding what needs to go behind the scenes is really for example you have to make sure that your team is happy you have to Budgets, marketing, social media is a huge thing. Marketing. Something that I don't really understand either. So, uh, I mean, I feel like social media is a big aspect of what we're doing now. And I didn't really expect that. I always thought if you just made a good product, people would have the support. But you really do have to put your name yeah, one thing you had mentioned was about how making a good product and then, you know, usually you'd expect people to come, but that's not always the case. Like, has that been really difficult, building an audience and, and building a community around the company? I think because my team is so popular, it hasn't been th as big of an issue as it would be for someone else. Um, I remember my first yo-yo coming out was a Flash, and I personally still think it's one of the best I've ever played with, but it didn't sell as good at first because the marketing wasn't quite there. But as I learned how to market better, uh, it started selling more, which is really interesting to me. And the one breakthrough I did notice when everyone started wanting one was after this year's World Yo-Yo Contest, everyone started buying it because of a tournament placing. The person that I made it for, Yuki Nishisako, got mm. fifth at Worlds, and right. all of a sudden, the yo-yo became a huge hit. So I guess I should say that, you know, competition results are also a huge marketing tool. Mm. Right, especially within the community, right? Definitely. Right. And, I mean, those are the people who buy these crazy expensive yo-yos are the people within this, I guess, a niche group. Um, one thing, you know, mentioning your team, I was looking at your site and I've kind of followed a few of the players on and off 
and it seems like your team is really varied from like all over the place. Uh, do you try to to reach out to? Are you trying to make like a really international type of team or? Yeah, so um, I don't quite discriminate based off of location. I just look for my main criteria of finding a player is does this person make me want to buy the yo-yo that they're using? And from there, I look into their style on their tournament placing, and then I look at their progression of advancement. So someone who's been pretty good for a long time, to me, isn't worth as much as someone who is getting better and he started from a lower position than he was now. So by following these types of players, I've been able to find people not only from the U.S., but from Japan, Korea. And, I mean, it's just all over the place now. So, um, you know, it's to me, it's never been about advertising. It's more about people who will be good in the future or are good now. And that just creates a diverse team. Yeah, because anyone could poach a player that's been good, but fostering talent is something that I think is really important. So kind of going off of that, like that sounds like a big part of your, your company philosophy. And as far as the design of your yo-yo, as you mentioned too, like the no frills, efficiency, competition ready, you know, classy, all that kind of stuff. Um, what kind of other things go into the design of your yo-yos? Do you have like inspirations or is it all off the dome? Basically, I every time I make a yo-yo, I consult with the members and I consult with some of my friends who are also on a team but not on my team about what they think is lacking in a yo-yo. And from there, I start making drafts for what type of play that it needs to be. So let's take, for example, my new yo-yo, the abduction. The abduction is meant for a high precision, uh, stability type style. And it's based off of the ignition. So I consulted with Elliot Ogawa, who is a 1A and a 3A player, and he said that the yo-yo was too hefty, um, like it felt like a rock, mm. and it just spun forever, but there was just dead weight on it. So mm. what we did was we removed the stainless steel rings, we redistributed the weight a little bit more towards the middle area, and we made it into 70-75 instead of 60-61, mm. and that resolved a lot of the issues if not all of them. And yeah, my design philosophy is just, you know, as little as, po I feel like little, uh, less is more in designs, as long as you're tackling all the issues. Um, one thing I want to know, so you mentioned the name of the, the new yo-yo coming out, right? The abduction? Yes. Um, I've noticed that I think everything except the flash has it. You've got the ignition the elimination and the corruption it all has that, that shun at the end. Is there a reason for that? Uh, so it all started when uh, I made the ignition, but that was actually supposed to be called the ignite. Mm -hmm. But Duncan didn't list ignite as one of their trademarks on their website. And I was told that I was going to get a cease and desist order, so I changed the name to Ignition. Ah. <laughs> and Corruption was just... It was just a name that I liked. Um, it was based off of a League of Legends move, actually. Oh, nice. And from there, I noticed the pattern, so I just kept the pattern going. It really works. I, I like the, the yeah, theme. Yeah, I like it a lot, too. <laughs> so I noticed the company, especially when the Corruption came out, there was a lot of feedback on that. A lot of videos got made about that. It seemed like a really interesting yo-yo. How have you dealt with the, like, it seems like, has the popularity for your company kind of grown slowly, or, or has it shot up once or twice when you release stuff? I think the people that have been following me from the beginning are the most dedicated fans. 
But I did notice a huge spike after I made the corruption. And I think that's due to the fact that my yo-yos were expensive and popular before. But the corruption made it so that anyone could pick one up easily. And to me, I feel like that fan base is so valuable and I'm so appreciative of it. And because of that, I decided I should be making cheaper yo-yos. Um, so my idea has been that my single metal yo-yos will be cheaper from now on while my buy metals are, you know, not expensive, but on the pricier side, so they kind of offset each other's balance in terms of uh, costs. So you kind of want to make sure that people aren't turned off by having to pay too much for something that they're, they maybe haven't tried before? Exactly. I feel like, you know, it's it's easy to find a metal yo-yo that spins well um, for a decent price, and there's no reason to be spending more money for something that you don't know if it's going to be good or not when you can get something reliable for cheaper. So I'm trying to make myself both reliable and affordable. The the elimination, right, is a collab yes. with Tapio? Yes. So how is it working, I guess, not only with a bimetal, but then working with another company? Oh, it was it was great. I think the owner, Tsai, is so nice. He's really dedicated to his craft, and he's really appreciative of everything that people do for him, and he does a lot back. So, I mean, he handles manufacturing for the elimination, and I wanted to try his factory just to see what he's about. I really like his products, so I offered, you know, hey, maybe we should do this collaboration model with a double ring. I feel like the double ring would work really well because he, we were prototyping in his shop and we noticed that every time I tried to make something ho like a hollow ring, uh, when I was designing the flash back, which is a year that'll be coming out in 2018, hopefully. Oh, nice. Um, it would either be unstable or it would break. So we decided to go with a double ring. And we made that we made the elimination as a proof of concept yo yo to make sure that the double ring would work. But we both liked it so much that we just released it as its own yo yo. And it's our collaboration model and I'm really proud of it. Mm, nice. Comes in some really, really great colors too, I've noticed. Yeah, I think his factory I mean his anodization is just off the chart is so beautiful. Yeah, you don't see a lot of the anos that even on the, I guess you'd say the more budget stuff like the Colossus or the Impulse that yeah. stuff, like they're just they're insane looking. They really are. They It just looks like abstract art. <laughs> mm, exactly. I, I would kind of place you in like the what we'd say now is like the boutique yo-yo companies, like the independently run but like putting out really you know good stuff would you would you say that about yourself or like you know like I you know my stuff's mm -hmm. like high quality it's classy you know you, you can expect to pay more because it's worth it or do you are you kind of trying to approach it as more like an every company that that anyone can buy from you know I've never actually thought about how the public perceives my products because I just try to make the best product as possible uh, that I can make and um, I don't know if it's big or small, but my runs have been getting bigger. Um, to f I guess it's like a supply and demand thing. Price point is really just so I can su supply my players with the compensation that they deserve. Consequently, also the people that look up to the players that I'm fostering. So, in terms of that, I feel like I've been pretty successful and the following has been increasing. And what are some other companies that you really respect right now or that you're you're looking to for you know, inspiration or like, oh, I like what they're doing? Um, I really like Recess. I think Recess has the most influence on the non-yo-yoing public, uh, like doing elementary school visits and other uh, showcases, having contests that are available to the public and not just the yo-yo community. Um, I really like Turning Point 
from a design perspective, Yo-Yo Factory. I really liked Bio Industries as well, but that's from quite a while ago. Oh, I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah, they they weren't managed well, but their concepts were great. And they're kind of speaking broadly about you know the state of the community now and the state of all the different companies. Are there any uh, trends that you see in the yo-yo world that are that are worrying you right now? Mm, in terms of trends, I think there's been a lot of rehashing, where they a product that's been come that has come out a while ago is being re-released as something new, even though they may have made one minute change or something really small like that. So. That's a worrying trend to me because I feel like that doesn't push new concepts out and it's just a reliable concept from before that they're rehashing. And on the other side of that, what do you kind of feel like is is something you really want to see or do you feel like you could help push? I want to see a plastic yo-yo with weight rings inserted into the mold. I think that'd be really cool. I don't know if it's possible or not, but that's something I'm... I'd want to look into. So not stuff like on the on the edges or like inside the cup, but actually like part of the body yeah, itself. Actually part of the yo-yo. I think that'd be really cool, but I'd also have no idea how to approach it in terms of durability. Yeah, I wonder. I don't think it could be polycarb. It'd have to be like Delrin or something, right? Or like a softer? <laughs> Absolutely no idea. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I guess that'll be your, your first plastic. Yeah, Maybe. hopefully. Well, actually, that's all I have for my questions here. I have a few questions from Instagram, if that's all right. Sure. Yeah, of course. All right. Um, so one of them is from uh, Blamin, who's a frequent commenter on my videos. He says, oh, yeah. um, can you do the Iwasawa Tower? Uh, yeah, I can, actually. I learned it in 2008 uh, from Iwasawa when I was in Japan. Wow. So from the person themselves? Yeah. <laughs> nice. What is? Uh, are there any tricks that you haven't nailed down yet that you're you're trying to get to? Um, I don't think I've ever actually done a three point five hook. That's something that I'd consider doing. I'd want to learn how to do some five A stuff. I feel like I've dabbled in it before, but I've never actually gotten serious into it. What have you um? So if you haven't done, really done any five A, have you have tried any like two or three or four? Um, I do two A a decent amount. Four hmm. uh, A I also like a lot. I have this belief that if I don't know how to do a style, I shouldn't be making products for it because I don't know what's good in it. So before I design a product for something, I'll always play that style. And because of that, I started doing four A again. And, yeah, I like it a lot. <laughs> nice. There's a big dearth of tutorials. Like, I constantly see people asking, like, how do you do two-way? Like, there's no... There doesn't seem to be a lot of, um, like, beginner help for, for looping and stuff. It's a really personal thing. And I feel like it's kind of like with music and instrumental teachings where you need to be in person to have an effective lesson. And I don't think tutorials are quite effective at that because so much of it is about feel instead of about looks. Uh, Nicholas Lotman asks, will you ever do another run of the corruption? Oof. That's something that I've been trying to get FPM to do, but because it's so hard to make, it's difficult. Um, I'll keep trying. I'll try my best. All right. Fair enough. And, uh, I like the second part of his question here because it, it's something I wonder about. What do you think about yo-yo scenes in different parts of the world? So I've noticed that the smaller the country, the higher the level of play. So the biggest example of this is Japan. Um, they're obviously a small country, you know, smaller than California, and they are able to go to every single regional contest because it's so close. Flights are so cheap because it's all like a small proximity. So because of that, they have the ability to share tricks and foster uh, talent within each other. 
it's different from you know sharing tricks on Instagram when you're actually just like watching on a screen versus watching someone do a trick in real life and then being inspired from there. So I think because of that, Japan has such a great scene. Another example is Hong Kong and also Singapore. Those are small countries, so they have close proximities to each other, and because of that, their talent grows really quickly. And a prime example of this that I see is Korea right now. I think Korea is getting to be a huge scene, and they'll be really dominant, I think, in the next five years. Are there any players from Korea we should be watching right now? The number one player that I think we should be watching in Korea is In Hyuk Choi. And there's one guy, he's a little kid on Instagram, and his Instagram tag is jihoo3a4a. I think those two people are the people that we should be watching. You heard it, people. Go check out those tags on Instagram. It's interesting. Hyuk Choi's tag is carryveris85. Right. But if you just look up his name, you'll find it. It is really rough to uh, to go to all the contests when everything is so far apart and the incentive isn't there. Um, I feel like it's gotten better with technology that that now we can view things online really quickly, especially uh, YoYo Video Archive. You know, his freestyles are basically up five minutes after they happen, so that's really good. Um, and that's kind of balanced out the level and you see people like Polo from Thailand and mm. uh, Azim from Brunei but I think now he's in the UK and these people popping up from smaller countries with no yo-yo scene or lesser yo-yo scenes so yeah I think that's pretty much all I've got here as far as my questions and Instagram but uh, is there anything else that you wanted to put into people's brains before we head out of here? So, in November, we'll be dropping the Abduction, which is a $45, 70-75 budget medal, signature of Elliot Ogawa. In December, we'll be uh, dropping the new run of Flash, featuring two signature colorways, one of a new member. And in March, that new member will also be getting a signature. And then your Instagram handle was... Instagram is unparalleled, U-N-P-R-L-D. Well, thank you very much for joining me. Thanks for getting thank Tokyo you. Yo Talk back into the swing of things. And uh, what I like to do at the end of these, if the guest is willing, is uh, to have the guest sign us off with the, the sure. catchphrase of the channel. All right, everyone. Sai Yo Yo Nara. Mm-hmm.